When I picked up that little bird house from Hobby Lobby a few weeks ago, I never really dreamed that it was going to turn into the project that it has. Uh, extremely detailed, intricate work, but honestly, one of the most fun projects that I've done. Well, if you watch part one, it's said to be continued at the end. What happened as I created that uh, Chateau de Blooms, I decided it was a bed and breakfast for our feathered friends. Well, it needed a scenery, a platform to sit on that would be just as interesting as the actual birdhouse itself. I wanted it, it to tell a story. So I began doing some research. Oh my word. I never dreamed that dioramas were such a huge thing. Thousands of videos of crafters doing these. It opened up a whole new world for me. I had never done anything like it before. And this was a very much a challenge. More challenging than just doing the actual birdhouse. So first thing I had to do was decide what kind of a platform it needed to be something that could just sit on a table or in a garden room or a sun room or something. So I looked at Hobby Lobby and again when the wood pile section was on sale I bought a triple uh, set of these round wood discs I guess you'd call them. I'm not sure. I used the largest one and as you see, I uh, cut out the circle on tracing paper because I needed to sketch out my design idea, which is what I'm doing here. And to tell you the truth, this was hard for me. I love architecture, um, but landscape architecture, uh, I'm not that great at. So this took a bit of time. So I hope you enjoy the video. There will probably be a couple of spin-off videos of how I made individual things that are going on this scenic diorama. And you'll probably notice a little bit different camera angle. I, I had to try to rig a way to put my camera up a lot higher so that you could see the whole process. And a process it is. Here we go. What exactly is this foam stuff? It's foam insulation. For houses? For any commercial jobs, mainly. Pink Panther. Like I said, most practical way would probably have been to use a saw, but it would have made a mess. What kind of saw? A big saw? A keyhole for all. See that mess? Yeah. I saw it would have made a hundred times that much.
Polystyrene is the kind of foam that most diorama experts use uh, in which to do their carvings for their scenes. Now, liquid nails is something that you could use to adhere the polystyrene to your wood surface. We didn't have any, uh, so we used what we had. My husband is, his company is drywall, and so he had FRP glue. Um, FRP is the kind of plasticky type board they put up in commercial buildings like in kitchens to wipe it off. Anyway, it's a very strong glue. So that's what I was applying and then put heavy books on top overnight to let it dry. That seemed to have glued down just beautifully, so that part's good. Uh, I love architecture. In fact, I drew our house plans and a few years later the house plans for a friend of mine my eldest son is a licensed architect now, but landscape architecture, no, that's not in my wheelhouse. So I have to look at pictures and I saved a ton of pictures of English cottages and you know, in the countryside type thing. And then I came across this one, which I guess is some model that's actually for sale. And that's kind of what gave me the idea for some rock walls and such. So, that's what I use to kind of sketch out what I'm doing here. And to say I know what I'm doing here is probably a gross understatement because I've never done this before. But I'm just gonna go for it. I tried to think about, okay, how could I transfer my paper to the top of the foam for cutting? And I couldn't come up with any idea. I mean, this is not the way people that build dioramas do it. But unconventional methods may work just as well. We'll see. If it, I fly by the seat of my pants a lot of times, so if it doesn't end up looking like I think it's supposed to look, I'll just, I don't know, keep working on it. Okay, where to begin? I think I'm gonna start out here. This side of the wall needs to be taller and go down to the height that I'm gonna have the path here, which is considerably low. So, I don't really have a wonderful blade to carve with, but I think this will work. It's actually for, um, it's made by Oasis, Oasis Foam. It's actually for cutting and stripping fresh flowers. So. Life is a winding Telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high 
Even if the sky is falling down Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground And I, I really wanna know, really wanna know If I, let me figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my high Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Even if the sky is falling down
I'm going to use now to cover the foam first is Plaster of Paris uh, with nothing else in it because this base here and then the little cobblestone walls, I just want a coating of something smooth on it. Then I'm going to mix up something else that's more textured for the rest of it. And I'll go over that as we do it. Mixing plaster of Paris, you want two parts plaster to one part water. And I've shown this before when I did a plaster art video. Uh, I put my water in first. I don't pour the water into the plaster. It's the other way around. I'm not sure if that's two to one, but I can always, nope, I need more water. I can always add more water. You don't want to mix plaster of Paris in too big a batch because you've only got maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes to work before it hardens. So what I do is I sprinkle the plaster in the water, kind of spread it around. And you see how quickly it soaks down in. You probably can't, let me move this. It's gonna soak down in the water quickly at first. But then it should be slower and slower and you should have these little islands, little mountains that slowly get covered up. This is just allowing the plaster to absorb that water very well before you start really stirring it. Well, it's been about 45 minutes. This is hard now, still moisture in it. But now I need to address the rest of the area and I also need to stick down my rocks. So, to do that, most of the diorama gurus use a product called Sculpta Mold. Well, I looked into buying that. First of all, uh, for one bag, it was $13.99, $14. Then you got tax and there wasn't free shipping. All in all, to buy one bag was gonna cost me 20 for almost $25. So, I looked into what I could do to make my own sculpt a mold. And not only is it a ton cheaper, but I already have all the products. Basically, you want a paper product mixed in with the plaster of Paris. Now, everybody that I saw do this on YouTube used toilet paper. And that's fine, but I don't wanna deal with that, especially since I already have a paper mache product that in my stash of supplies. If you are gonna do this though, and you do use toilet paper, you wanna tear it pretty thinly, but you also want to mix your plaster of Paris first and then mix in your toilet paper. With the, my product, which is a paper mache product, 
um, cellular clay. It's already really fine fibers. Um, so I'm going to mix my plaster and this together first. Uh oh, knocking off my rocks. Stop doing that. Now, how'd I have it? See? I think I had it like that. Okay. So, I'm going to mix my dry ingredients together in an equal ratio of Plaster of Paris and my Activa Cellular Clay. Put the dry mix um, in my container. With water, you're gonna really just need to, to add some and stir. With sculpt mold they say it should be about like cottage cheese. So that's what I'm going to do. Taking my paintbrush now, just a wet paintbrush, and then the road area, I'm trying to smooth it down a bit. It's going to have gravel, stone stuff anyway, but I want it fairly smooth. You have to work pretty fast with this stuff. Now I can just use my fingers. In this meadow area, it doesn't have to be all that smooth. In fact, it needs to probably be a little bumpy. And before this totally cures, I think I'm going to pull my tape off the side. I may retape it, but for now, I want a clean edge. Yeah, that was a good idea to pull that tape because now I have a clean edge. And if I had let that totally harden, I'd have had a mess to try to get off. So now we can set this aside and let it completely dry. Plaster of Paris is an extremely absorbent material. So you've got a couple of choices. If you want to apply paint directly to it, my suggestion would be to take a little spray bottle of water and mist it first so that as you're painting, the plaster will not suck all the moisture out of your paint. For me, I decided to use uh, gesso first as kind of a barrier. Um, gesso is used for absorbent surfaces like raw wood and in this case plaster of Paris. I coated the entire foam with the gesso and the reason I was doing that is because my next steps are going to be to make my cobblestones out of air dry clay and again I did not want that plaster of Paris to suck all the moisture out of the clay too quickly and then I'd have a cracky mess
before I seal all of this, I'm gonna go ahead and add some mosses. Um, this is some that I've had for quite a while that I ordered a long time ago. This is what's dried from our yard. And then this is lichen and such, a couple different kinds, again, from our oak trees. So I'm just gonna go around the sides, under the tree, in different locations, and add some of that. To secure everything down in this bottle, I have isopropyl alcohol. In this bottle, I have one part Mod Podge, three parts water, and three drops of dish soap. The end of this cap, where the holes are, I'm going to cut it off where it only reaches where the glue is, the top of the glue. And give it a good shake. But as this sits here, the glue will settle to the bottom again and cutting off that tip will keep, keep it from getting way clogged. So the first thing we want to do is spray everything with the alcohol. This is gonna help the glue to penetrate. Before the alcohol dries. I'm gonna hit it with the glue.